Hello and welcome to the 2017 edition of the RSNA meeting in Chicago. My name is Brian Casey. I'm editor-in-chief of AntMini.com. We have with us right now Dr. Uh, Dr. Jesse Cordier. He is a radiologist at the University of California, San Francisco. Dr. Cordier, thanks for being with us today. Thanks so much for the invitation to speak. Uh, one of the most interesting developments in radiology in the last year or so has been the rise of uh, virtual reality and radiology. And uh, Dr. Cordier has been doing some a really interesting work in what he calls augmented reality. Uh, Dr. Cordier, can you uh, can you talk to us about that a little bit? Yeah, certainly. So augmented reality differs from virtual reality in that uh, there's a spectrum both from virtual reality, which is a completely immersed and enclosed experience where you're completely in the virtual world. You're blindfolded and really looking only at virtual world. But augmented reality takes just reality and then adds, superimposes holograms onto the real world background. So this is kind of like Pokemon Go, if I remember what my kids were doing with it. Exactly right. So yes, we're finding the Pokemons and things like that. Other people harken back to the old movie Minority Report with Tom Cruise where he's definitely maneuvering these holograms around uh, with these special gloves. And it's really taken some time for the technology to catch up with where we're able to do now. Just with only in the recent few years with devices like the Microsoft HoloLens and Apple's AR Kit, where now these are possible. Now, what are you guys doing at UCSF? So currently at UCSF, we're using this for pre-surgical planning. So we're taking three-dimensional models and instead of 3D printing them or anything like that, we're able to very quickly and on the fly take these same models and pull them up before surgeons so a surgeon can think through a case um, three-dimensionally beforehand. Now, how are radiologists interacting with these models? So uh, right now, we use this in our pre-surgical planning conference. So we're showing these models, both displaying them on a conference uh, uh, TV as well as having the radiologists and the surgeons look through the case uh, together. And then you brought with us uh, some goggles that apparently are, yes. are used with this. And so the radiologist or the, or the surgeon will put these on and uh, they're, they're not activated right now so I, I'm not looking at a virtual reality or anything like that but, but uh, you can get a feel for, you know, the, the headset is pretty lightweight um, and, uh, and I could see how this could be really a, a good in a surgical environment so, or a, in a radiology environment. Now, when a radiologist is looking through these goggles, what are they seeing? So when you're seeing this here, actually it's uh, the Microsoft HoloLens, which this device is, uh, projects these holograms onto a background. And so you have a certain field of view that it's projecting these onto. So it isn't completely enclosing you with, uh, virtual, with uh, holograms, but within a certain field of view, you're able to see three-dimensional things almost as if they're right in front of you. They stay in a fixed position. This device maps out a background, a digital background of the, the actual real world, and it places it within a certain space. You're able to walk around it, walk through it, make it bigger or smaller, all with the, in a very realistic fashion. Now, what are some of the clinical applications that you, th you might you think are most, uh, this is most, most useful for? I think there's a lot of potential for augmented reality within radiology, both for education, for pre-surgical planning, and eventually even with intraoperative use. So imagine if you're a medical student, I remember when I was a medical student, it would have been great to have a three-dimensional model that I could pull up and study and look from all different angles. Um, and as well as for surgical planning, really for a surgeon, it's hard for them. As radiologists, we can take the leap from 2D to 3D. We spend our whole time training to do that in our minds. But with a surgeon, really, they don't have that same training. And so going from a two-dimensional world or a CT to looking at a real patient in three dimension is a big leap for them. So to be able to take something holographically, turn it in the way that they're going to see the patient on the operating room table in three dimensions is really valuable to them. Now, is this something that you guys are using on patients right now, or is it still in an experimental mode? So right now, we have an uh, IRB to use this for pre-surgical planning. So I'm a pediatric radiologist, so we're using this for our pediatric radiology cases and surgical planning conference, as well as for neurosurgery. So uh, we may see neurosurgical models. Uh, in fact, uh, what we've been able to do is do a brain tumor model where we've been able to look at the optic radiations, be able to see the tumor and even the cerebral vessels so that the uh, surgeon can plan this out and move it in an exact position where they want to know exactly where they might target their surgery. What are some of your next steps with this research and, and, and what do you think needs to happen uh, to make this a, a clinical reality for people in uh, community radiology practices? Certainly, I think there are a few next steps. So what we're looking for is further development of the application, both so that we can improve the user interface and make it overall um, with this so it can be more simple to use for surgeons, for radiologists. Uh, really what I think the next steps are clinician buy-in. So uh, really proving the value added for augmented reality in radiology, that it can improve OR times, that it can reduce complications. 
and also uh, overall just uh, corporates uh, working with corporations and corporate support so that we can really further develop this and take it to the next level. Great. Well, I look forward to seeing uh, the next level and what you guys come up with. Thanks so much. Sure. All right. Signing off for AntMini.com, my name is Brian Casey.